All right, it is gap day. So I've got my pencils here. I'm ready to do some pencil puzzles, but online without pencils. Um, so this is, I believe, my ninth gap video, not counting some of the super size and some other ones. Um, oh, and I did some on a stream too. So depending on how you count it, but my ninth just gap, called gap video, I guess. <laughs> So we've been doing a lot of these. We are up through December 26th now, so I am over a month behind. So I need to do some more of these pretty soon to get caught up. I keep saying I need to do more of these to get caught up. And then the next time I'm saying I need to do more of these to get caught up. But at some point, I really do need to do more of these to get caught up. But we're going to see. We'll do a few of them today. We'll see how it goes. Depending on how long they take, we'll do more or less of them. So the first one up, without further ado is a Masayu, 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 I'm not sure how to say it, by Eric Fox. So in Masayu, we are drawing a non-intersecting loop through the centers of some cells that passes through every circle. The loop must turn on black circles, travel straight through the cells on either side. The loop must go straight through white circles and turn in at least one of the cells on either side. So let me see, I've got... Oh, all right, so I've got an example here, so you can see over there. So the way it works is the black circles, you have to turn in a black circle. And then uh, it, miss, must, it says it must go straight on either side. Essentially, the way my brain thinks about this is it has to turn on the black cell, and then it has to go two cells once it leaves the black cell. That's just It's the, saying the same thing, but that's just how I think about it. Now, in a white circle, it has to go straight through, so it's kind of like... Uh, the blue cells in Ice Barn, where you can't turn on a white cell, so you have to go straight through, and one of the two sides has to turn then. Not necessarily both, but at least one. So you can kind of see in the example there what's going on. We're drawing a loop, it's not crossing itself, you know, all the usual loop stuff. And that's it. So um, I'm gonna give it a try now. We'll see how this goes. So let's reset the timer. Okay, so we know this has to go this way, that has to go through, it has to turn, these have to go through, they have to turn like that. These are all forced to do all of this. Those have to go straight through. This one has to go that way. This has to go here. That does that. This is all forced, we can do that. No, we don't do that, sorry goes that way, this has to turn that way, which has to go there. Now we have to avoid touching. Uh, this one has to turn and go there. So this has to come up this way. This has to turn. This is forced that way, these can't touch. This, ooh, this could come around and connect there, couldn't it? But we have to do that, we know that much. Ah, now that this came through here, it would create a loop. So this does have to go around and through to there. This has to go straight through, has to turn, and we can't create a small loop there. And so now we just have to get through this last little bit. This piece has to touch. Let's see. Oh, if we go straight through, then we wouldn't have a turn. So we have to go this way. Uh, we have to go that way. These are both forced to turn. The ends. This can't turn this way. It would create a small loop. Same with this one. So now... This is forced there, which goes there, and that means that these can't touch, so we do that, and there, there we go. So 137 on the Masayu, let's see what that does for our time. Let's see, Masayu, oh, I just missed a sloth. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll say that I, I was doing some sort of explaining that slowed me down for seven seconds, or I would have had that one. We'll go with that. All right, on to the next one. All right, up next is a crystal mine. This is by Shy, and this is another genre that I've never done before. So we are drawing a non-intersecting path through the centers of some cells, connecting the two arrows, okay? The path must collect every crystal, but must not occupy all four cells in any two by two area of the grid. So we have my favorite two by two rule. Um, Let's see, let me pull up the example here. There we go. So, right, so we have to, um, I think part of it's cut off, but that's okay. So you can see we start at the arrow over there, and I think there's an arrow off the edge of the grid over here that I cut off when I cropped the image. But we have to go through 
We have to connect the arrows. The path must collect every crystal, so all of the black cells have to be collected. But must not occupy all four cells in any two. Okay, so I think I understand. That makes sense. Okay. All right, so let's get rid of the example there. Here we go. Let's see. We're going to reset the timer. And okay, we're off. So we know we have to come in here and come out here. We have to collect all of the things. So in the corners, we have to do this. We have to do that. We can't use all four. So we can't use, oh, we don't have, I don't have an X. Okay. Uh, all right. I can't go there. So this one has to go straight. This one has to come down. Which makes this sort of a new corner here. And now that we've used those three, we can't use this one. So that's forced to go straight. We also can't use this one. So all of the corners actually have to go straight after they've done their little thing there. Um, What do we do from here? Oh, this this piece here now has to, yeah, we can't use this corner. I need to, maybe I'll switch to surface. Okay, that'll work. Uh, I need to do, we'll just make them like yellow or something. There we go. So we can't do those. I have to go back to line. Okay, so that means this is now essentially another little corner. Now we've done these three. Uh, there's not a, there's probably not a, I don't, I don't know a shortcut key to jump back and forth between line and Shading, so we'll just have to do it this way with clicking. It's gonna slow us down though. So that has to go straight now because we can't use either of those. Oh, we can't use this one either. So that forces this line to go straight. And now, Let's see, what do we do next? This is gonna do one of those. So, oh, so both of these have to be part of the line. So, right, so that means this one can't be. Which means this has to come through here like this. It creates another little corner, which gives us another shaded cell. This has to go that way. Uh, we can't get into there, so these two we could go straight through. Oh, if it goes, yeah, we've got three tips here. So one of them has to exit out this little region here. One of them has to come out this way. So that could connect up there, or these could connect across. I think either way works. Oh, but then we'd have all four of these. So no, we can't. We have to go this way. If we went straight through, we'd have four cells that were all covered. So we have to do that. And then we've got, oh, we've got, yep, same thing over here. We're going to have, both of these circles are going to be part of the line. So that's going to be out. These two, do we have, these, these two plus the line there means we have that. This line comes out that way, and now I've got the same thing here. And so this has to come through, that has to be like that. Therefore, this one is now another corner, essentially. Uh, this is weird, this is, this is very unusual. Um, this is now connected to the out, so we can't connect across here. But it could come over one and, no, it can't turn and go down. Right, because if, if we have both of these and we go over here, this one is going to be shaded and then we'd have to connect the end to the out already. So we can't go there. Well, that's not necessarily true, actually. We can't go there with this line. The other one could, no, it can't because it would have to turn. We'd have all four. Yeah, so we can't do that. Okay, so from there, this, this could connect to there. If it doesn't connect to there, they're both coming down and we've got a two by two issue again. If this comes down and over, again, two by two issue. So it's got to go that way. 
this is another little corner here, which gives us a shaded cell there and there. And this, if this came up, you'd again get a two by two issue, so it's gotta go across that way. Oh, this one can't go there, that's another shaded. This is, the, oh wait, that actually has to connect to there, sorry, not that way. And then I think we just do that, there we go. All right, that one felt slow, but um, let's see, 514, let's see what that does for us. Yep, but that's still easily in crab time, so that's not too bad. It's my first time doing a crystal mine or even seeing a crystal mine, so I'm happy with that. All right, on to the next one. All right, next up is a puzzle called Persistence of Memory. This one's by Jovial, and it's another new one to me. So we're gonna draw a non-intersecting path again. We're doing lots of paths, connecting the two circles. Okay, so instead of uh, the arrows, we're connecting the circles. Cells used by the path, which are not consecutive line segments, do not touch orthogonally or diagonally. Cells used by the path, which are not consecutive line segments. Okay, so I, I think that means, is that just like our normal snake rules where you can't touch? Let's, let's pull up the example for a second. I think, I think that's just our normal like snake can't touch itself kind of rules. Okay, the path visits each shaded region at least once. Okay, sort of like an ice barn kind of deal. And if two shaded regions are the same shape and orientation, the line segments within them, including entrances and exits, must be identical. Two shaded regions are the same shape and orientation. Okay, so like in row three and four there, those are dominoes are the same shape and orientation. The line segments within them, including entrances and exits, must be. Okay, so in the example again, ah, I see. Okay, I think I see. So in three and four, we have those two dominoes, rows three and four. Um, and there's the line segment goes through the bottom of both of them. And then in row two and row six, we have those single cell shaded regions and the line comes in the top and out to the left so it goes the same way okay and each shaded region has to be visited at least once but not necessarily each shaded cell again that's kind of like ice barn okay I think I understand maybe I guess we'll find out. So uh, let's see, let's get rid of the example. Link in the description. Here we go. This is a weird one, we'll see what I can do. Um, so this is a single cell shaded thing. So if this goes to the right, all of them will have to go to the right through. And this one, oh, but it could go in and turn, couldn't it? In fact, it has to go in and turn because this one has to go in and turn, okay. So all of the single cells have to be like this then. Got it, got it. Okay, now the double the double uh, domino, vertical domino, we can't do this, because the, then we'd be touching. So we gotta, we've gotta, no matter how we come into this, we gotta come out the top. So we definitely come out the top of both of those. Now the horizontal one, same kind of deal. It's got to come out the right side, I think. And we can't go out the top. So it's got to either turn and come down or go over and down. This one can't come out the bottom. Oh, this one's also the same way. Okay, so we get that much. Now... This can't, oh, this can't turn back on itself, so it's got, uh, it's got to either do, yeah, no, it has to do this, right, and then, this one, same deal, it has to go that way, 
And we've got to get back up here somehow. So I don't think it can come through here because it's, oh wait, how did I get? Oh, there we go. There we go, I have X's and circles. <laughs> All right, I didn't know I had those. Okay, anyways, this, if it comes down here, it's gonna be connect, and this way it's gonna be touched. Either way, it's gonna be kind of touching itself. So, so that can't, so we basically we can't be over here because we're gonna touch. So it's gotta turn down this way, which means that one does the same thing. This one does the same thing. Now we connect there, which means this can't turn. It's gotta go that way. So this one's gotta do the same thing. And now it can't turn back up that way. So it's gotta go here, which means it has to come in from the bottom there and go up to there. This one can't go that way, so we have to come in the top. And now, yeah, so it has to connect through there. There we go. Uh, and then this one's a no, a no go. This one's no go. And we already said we can't come over here, so this has to come down into this way. So like that, and then. Yeah, it can't go to the right. Oh, it could go, it could go to the left. No, it can't go to the left there. So this one has to come down like that. That has to connect. This has to connect up there. And then these have to connect. This can't go up. Yep, this has to come over this way. Now this last bit, it can't turn there. It has to come up and then it has to connect. There we go. That took me longer than it probably should have, but yeah, I've never seen that. That I think I think that if that's different than just our normal snake can't touch itself rule, let me know. But that's the way I understood it, and that's the way it worked out. It's just worded differently. I wasn't sure if there was some if it meant something different or not. So, anyways, maybe that's just me being confused. So what do we got? Three thirty six on that one. I'm sure that's a crab. Yep, that's a crab. That's all right, I'll take that. 2.30 was the sloth time. All right, that was persistence of memory. Moving on to the next one. All right, next up is consecutive quads. This one is by Turganis. Um, again, another new one. So we're placing numbers. So this is the first one that's not uh, drawing a loop today. Place numbers from one to six so that each number appears only once in each row and column. Okay, so like a Latin square. Excuse me. White dots indicate that the two by two area contains exactly one consecutive pair of digits. Black dots. <laughs> Excuse me. Black dots indicate that the two by two area contains at least two consecutive pairs of digits. Not all dots are given. Numbers may be repeated in two by two areas. Any unique pair of consecutive digits counts, even with repeated numbers. And they had an example where. Two, three, three, six would count as two pairs because the two with the three and the two with the other three. So interesting. Okay, I think I understand the rules. Uh, let's let's look at the example just to be sure. So the black dot indicates that there's two consecutive, at least two. Okay, so in the top top left there, we have a three with a four that's consecutive, and we have a four and a five that are consecutive. Oh no, we have. At least two, right? So there's two, three, three, four, four, five are all consecutive. Okay, let's look at one of the white dots, like right here. The two and the three are consecutive, but the fives are not consecutive with anything. So there's just one. Then down here we have one, two, two, three, three, four. So again, we have three. Okay, I think I think I understand. Okay, uh, link in the description. I'm gonna reset the timer. Let's see how this goes. Let's see, reset, there we go. All right, so there's only one consecutive pair here. Let's let's think about, before we worry about that, let's look at this row. Let's just do some normal Sudoku or normal Latin square stuff. This can't be two, that can't be two. This has to be the two. Um, and then we have to have twos in the corners here. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Twos in these, twos have to be in those. Um, not sure which way it goes though yet. Uh, this has to have, oh, so if this is a two, right, if this is a two, uh, you can still do a consecutive 
These two could be consecutive and not with the twos, though. Okay, yep, never mind. But these have to be three and four. This is four. This is three. Okay, so we need one, five, and six. We need one, one, five, and six. Okay. One, five, and six. One, five, and six. Uh, so one of these... Two, no. <laughs> we already have a consecutive pair right here. The three and the four. We cannot have any more consecutives in this two by two. Therefore, this can't be a five. This needs to be one, four, or five because of the row. It can't be a four because of the column, and it can't be five because it would be consecutive. So that's a one. These have to be four and five, and we know the order because of the five there. Oop, whoa. How did I do that? There we go. That was weird. Um, so we've got that there. This one uh, needs to have one consecutive... So we, if we have a one, then we're going to have cons two consecutive pairs because it can be consecutive with both of the twos. If we have a six, it won't be consecutive anything. It's got to be a five. This is therefore not a five. Neither is that. Now we've got a consecutive pair here, but we could have a six, which would be consecutive, or you could do like a one and a two here. You could put a three to be consecutive with the four. What are these? These are two, three, and five. This one can't be two. So the, the white dots are going to be the, yeah, one and two are already consecutive. So this can't be anything that's consecutive to a one, two, or four. So it can't be a one or a two, obviously. Can't be a three, can't be a four, can't be a five. Oh, it could be a, no, it can't be a four, can't be a five. This has to be a six. We need to have exactly one consecutive pair here. So not sure. Okay. These are one, three, and six. Got the four and the five. Okay, what about right here? Two, three. So this has to be consecutive to one of them, but not two of them. So we could do a one. Can't do a three or a five. Oh, yeah, it has to be a one. It has to be a one. It can't be a two or a six. If it's a four, it's not going to be consecutive to anything. And if it's a three or a five, it'll be consecutive to two things. So that's a one and a six and a three. That makes these two, two and four. This is not six, this is not six. If this is a one or a five, it's gonna be consecutive to one of these two. So this one cannot be consecutive, which it's it's not. If that was a two, this would have to be a five, okay. Uh, again, white dot here, so could do six and five. Oh, the three is gonna be consecutive to the two or the four, so this can't be the five, this is the one. This is the five, therefore the five and the six are consecutive. This has to be a two, this is a four. That is not a two, this is a two. Six, one, three, five. And now we're just filling in the remaining digits. Five, three, this is six and one. There we go. All right, that was kind of cool. That was uh, an interesting way to handle a Latin square with the consecutives. And um, it, it, they were kind of like quadruples in that they were telling you what was in the four cells around, but it was telling you how many consecutives there were instead of which digits. And interesting. That was fun. All right, let's see. What was my time? 355, probably another crab. Indeed. If I can get all crabs on, on uh, puzzles that I've never done before, new genres to me, I'm happy with that. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, next up is a canal view, another new one to me, but uh, it's by Freddie Hand, so Freddie always does a good job. I mean, really, all of the gap constructors always do a good job, but uh, anyways, I, I seem to particularly do well with Freddie's puzzles, so whatever that, for whatever reason. Sh so the rules here are shade some cells so that all shaded cells form one orthogonally connected area. Okay, clues cannot be shaded and represent the number of shaded cells connected in a straight line horizontally or vertically to the clue. Okay, this sounds kind of like cave. Uh, no two by two, okay, our old friend the two by two rule. Yep, so let's pull up the example here. So, represent the number of, sh oh, it represents the number of shaded cells. So it's not like cave. It's not like cave, but because in cave, it's telling us how many unshaded cells are connected to it. Okay. 
Okay, so it is kind of like Cave, but it's it's kind of like if Cave was telling you the links of the walls connected to it, as opposed to the actual... Okay, I think I understand now. All right. <laughs> so, yes. Okay, so as we can see, let's look at the example. So the four in the top right corner there has four shaded cells to the left and none below it. So it has four connected, but the six in row three here has two above, three to the left, and one below. So two plus three plus one is six. Okay. Shade some cells. All the shaded cells and all the shaded cells are connected, but the unshaded don't have to be. Yes. Okay. I think I understand. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, reset the timer. We'll figure this out. So these are all unshaded. Uh, okay, and, and, so let's just do that. We know this nine has to have nine shaded cells connected to it. And you could only have at most four to the right and one down. So it's five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it has to have those. One, two, three, four, five, six. It could only have seven and one down. So it has to have that one. Now the three already has one. So it can only have two more, but... We have to remember the two by two rule as well, of course. So where do we go next? Let's see, the six here could have six. Oh, this six, one, two, three. It has to have all six. There we go, that's what I should have seen. And the shaded all have to be connected, so that has to come down. Now, we can't shade this because of the two by two. So now we get four five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those all have to be shaded. This has to be connected to the rest of the shaded cells. So we get that. This one now can't be because of the two by two. Uh, so where do we look next? The six has three already. The two has one. These have to connect somehow, but they could connect there or they could come down around this way. Only one of one of these two is going to be right. So one of these two has to be in because this top piece has to connect down. So this one can't be shaded then because that's going to be the second one for the two, one side or the other. And the three, again, one side or the other has to be in, but. So where are we supposed to be looking next? The four, the two, the six here. Is there a two by two issue that I'm not seeing? Oh, there is, there is. Okay, if this, if, if the top piece drops down on the left side, it can't drop down on the right side and it'll have to stick out here, which will create a two by two issue. So it has to go that way. This one has to come out there. There we go. Now this six has one, two, three, Four. It can only get one down here potentially, so it's got to have one more there. Two, three, four, five. So either this one is in or that one. One of the two. Well, the th the three. Oh, but it can get. Yeah. Okay. Um, I shouldn't have said that I always do good with uh, Freddy's puzzles because, of course, now I'm going to be slow. One, two, three, four. So it's this. The five already has four connected to it. It can only have one more. And if this one is, uh, no, you could go there. I was going to say it, it would have to come out this way, but it, it, it wouldn't. It can't come out that way, in fact, so whatever, for whatever that's worth. Two, 
two, three. This one needs three more. But it could get all of them over there. Two, three, four, five. It could have six. That would be unshaded there. Or it could have this one and this could be unshaded. Okay, I'm not seeing something that I should be seeing apparently. Can this one be shaded? It would have to go that way. Seems like that would potentially work. If this comes out this way, it then has to turn because you'd have the two by two issue there. This would be like that. But that seems okay. Otherwise, if it doesn't go that way, then it has to connect here, which also seems fine. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. All right. <laughs> oh, all right, well, this happens sometimes. The three here, if this is a shaded one, the three sees four. That obviously cannot be. So this has to be this way. Now I get one, two, this has to be shaded. That's unshaded because of the two by two. All right, and this is unshaded because the three already sees three. This is unshaded because the six sees six. And so the only way for this section to connect is through here. That's unshaded because of the two by two rule. Now this three sees one, it has to see two more there, which gives us that. That gives us all of them for the five. This has to come out here so the shaded can connect. This now only has three options. That's gotta connect, that's unshaded. Ah, can't believe that. I'm mad at myself now. I should have seen all of that. Anyways, okay, this has to keep coming to connect. This now has three connected to the three, so we do all of that. This comes through here. Um, that would be it for the two, the, f if this, if this is shaded, those are both shaded. You have nothing here. That would be fine. The six, one, two, three, four, five. So it has three. It can't get, it can only do two here at most now because otherwise it would connect to this and it would have too many. So that one has to be shaded. Oh, the two is done. So we get all of that. So now the six has to have all three of those. Two, three, four has to have that one, which then has to come out here. And so the four, we can't have both of these actually. One, two, three, so the four has to go there. So that's the two. It gives us that and that. That's not shaded, one, two, three, four, and that has to connect. Oh. All right, I jinxed myself, I think, by saying that I usually do well on Freddy's puzzles. So there you go, uh, I bet that wasn't even a crab. All right, 807, let's see, let's check it out. It's all right, oh yeah. Yep, that's a bird. It's all right, it was bound to happen, okay. Well, that was Canal View. I actually think that's kind of a fun puzzle. Um, it is sort of like Cave. I don't know if maybe, I'll, I'll use that as my excuse for why I was uh, struggling with it because I'm so used to Cave and it's similar but not. Yeah, that, that, we'll, we'll stick with that. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, next up is a Yajisan Kazusan. I think is how we're gonna say that. Uh, this one is by Eric Fox, and again, another new genre for me. So, shade some cells so that no two shaded cells are orthogonally adjacent, 
and the remaining unshaded cells form one orthogonally connected area. So this is kind of like, uh, is it Hay Awake, I think, where the shaded, none of the shaded cells can touch each other and the unshaded cells all have to be connected. If a cell with a number in it is unshaded, the number represents how many shaded cells are in a straight line in the indicated direction. So that's kind of like Yagellon. And if a cell with a number in it is shaded, the number is meaningless and may be true or false. Okay, so the, the numbers only matter if they're in unshaded cells. Okay, let's look at an example. <laughs> I like the I like the 999, 999, like clearly that has to be false. So, okay, so I guess that would tell you that one has to be shaded because it clearly can't be true. Interesting. Okay, so it kind of works both ways. You can say this is unshaded. It must be true. You can also say this can't be true. It must be shaded. Okay. I can see that. So the unshaded ones, like the one there and the two there, show us how many shaded cells are in that direction, kind of like, like I said, Yagellon. And we've got all the unshadeds are connected and all the shadeds are not connected. Okay. I think... I understand. So let's uh, reset the timer. <coughs> and uh, let's see, reset the timer. Here we go. All right. So this three clearly can't have three shaded cells. So it is, now this one could have three unshaded. It would be every, or three shaded, sorry. It would be every other one. could have two this could have two okay so oh so we know we can't shade right so the un, the shaded can't touch each other orthogonally so we get this so this is unshaded so it has to have two okay there we go that's what i needed to do uh this one has one this one has two so we do that so this one is now true so we have one we need one more over here Oh, this one, this one can't be true. You can't put three down there. I should have seen that's the same thing. I don't know why I didn't see that. I just didn't, didn't look at that clue, I guess. So that's shaded. So this is unshaded. So then we have to have two. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, if this is shaded, you're going to have unshaded cells that aren't connected. So this has to be unshaded. So we are going to have two over here. So one of these two and one of these two are shaded. And we know one of these three. So it can't be both of these. I think it has to be that one. One of those two and one of these three. You can't do something like this. Could you do that? I think you could do that though. Oh, you can't do, oh right, right. We can't do this one because it would it would trap a, a cell in here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we also can't do this one because these would all be blocked then. Um, and now we've got this line up here, so these have to connect across through here, which gives us three shaded cells over there. Uh, one of these two has to be shaded. It can't be that one, because it would block an unshaded in the corner. Um, okay, so over here we were saying one, uh, yeah, it can't be diagonally this way, so it's got to be diagonally that way. So the one is true, this has to be unshaded, that's unshaded, this is unshaded, just for connectivity, 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 whatever you want to call it. Oh, this obviously can't be shaded. This one is, so we get all of that and all of this. Now this one is not true, so it's shaded, which means that's unshaded, there we go. This has to be unshaded. This has to be unshaded. That one cannot be true, so it's shaded. Which then it gives us that. And now this is, there we go. All of that is true, and this one is shaded. There we go. All right. Should have been faster, but I'll take it. That, that one didn't feel too bad. 249. Um, took me longer than it should have to notice a couple of things, but there we go. Back in crab territory. All right. All right, that's it for today's gap puzzles. Um, let me know how you did with those. Did you struggle with the the canal view by uh, Freddie as much as I did? Did you struggle with a different one? Did you think they were all easy? Let me know how you did. I'm, I'm curious to know which one, how you did, you know, were they easy, hard, and did you like them or did you not like them? I'm also curious about that. So there we go. I'll see you again soon with some more puzzles then. Thanks, bye.